In this video, I'm going to paint a vibrant watercolour ranunculus using Roman Schmoll paints. Jackson's Art Supplies have recently opened a warehouse in Australia and they kindly sent me a few products to try. One of the products was these watercolour paints made by Roman Schmoll. These are made in Poland. This particular set comes in a metal box with 12 colours suitable for botanical painting. And it has room for 12 more colours. There are now 180 colours in the range and most of them are single pigment, which is important when you mix colours because it allows for clean mixes. Each colour is made with gum arabic and glycerin, linden honey, distilled water and pure pigments. That first yellow is called Aquarius yellow, which is semi-transparent. This one here is permanent yellow, that's also semi-transparent, and it's also a staining colour. This one is quinacridone gold, which is a transparent staining colour as well. This colour here is called benzimidazole orange, I hope that's how you say it. It's a semi-transparent staining colour as well. And then we have permanent red, that's semi-transparent and staining. Permanent alizarin crimson is next, that's transparent and it's a heavily staining colour. This one is quinacridone magenta, that's transparent and staining as well. And this one is quinacridone pink, I thought they were very similar. And then we have the violet, which is also transparent and staining. It has some slight granulation, that colour. French ultramarine, one of my favourite blues. That's semi-transparent, granulating and staining. And this one is thalo blue red shade, which is transparent and moderately staining. And finally, cobalt cerulean blue, which is a semi-opaque colour and moderately staining. These paints are known for their high pigment concentration and I can say yes, I agree with that. The colours are really vibrant. They have honey added to them to enhance their properties. It's supposed to make them remain moist and workable for longer periods of time. That's great for my method of painting because I tend to layer and fuss a lot as I paint. But for those artists who work quickly and fluidly, they might find these paints more difficult to work with. I'm not used to painting with pan paints, and because these paints are really moist when you wet them, I found I tended to pick up a lot of pigment with my brush, so I had to be careful that I wasn't putting it onto the paper too heavily. The paper I used for this painting was Arsh Coal Press 640 GSM. I've put links to the paints and the brushes that I used in the description. All right, let's have a look at it. This is a reference photo that I took a few years ago. For this painting, I ended up zooming in and cropping the flower. The first thing I thought I'd do is paint a wash of the Aquarius yellow all over the paper. So here I'm wetting it with my hake brush. I've got my big mop brush and this is the Aquarius yellow. I painted that colour onto the wet paper. I didn't need to reserve any white paper anywhere and I thought that this yellow would give all my colours a nice glow. Okay, so that needs to dry now. When it was dry, I decided to paint in the background area first. So for that, I wanted to work on wet paper to keep all the paint edges soft and fuzzy. So here I'm wetting the background with water. Not only did I want to keep the edges of the paint soft, but I also wanted a fairly pale colour. So here I've got the orange. And I didn't want it too dark, so I mixed some more water with it. I also put a little bit of the permanent red into that. I painted that onto the wet paper. I 
I wanted the background to look like it was further away, so I didn't want any hard edges here. Before that dried, I picked up a bit of the Aquarius yellow and I painted that onto it, just in a few places. I also used some of the permanent alizarin crimson. I painted that on in the darker areas that I could see. I mixed some French ultramarine with the red orange mixture that I had on the palette just to deepen the colour. And then I used that on these darker areas as well. I also mixed some green from French ultramarine and Aquarius yellow and I painted that on there too while it was wet. Just keeping everything loose and not too dark for the background. I added a bit more blue to the green mixture and darkened some areas. And all of this was done on the one wetting of the paper. So the paint stayed quite moist while I was doing this. I took a few highlights out while it was starting to dry. And I also added a few darker areas as well. And here I'm working on dry paper. I'm deepening the colour inside one of the petals and I'm using a mixture of the orange and permanent red. Then I wet the paper and I added a bit more of the permanent alizarin crimson and also the red and orange mixture. I think I went a bit dark there with the permanent alizarin crimson. When the background was dry, I started to wash in some of the petals with Aquarius yellow again, this time much brighter and bolder, and I'm working on dry paper. And I found that the wet paint stayed workable for quite a fair amount of time. When that was dry, I started to work on each petal individually. And for the vast majority of them, I worked on wet paper. So here I'm wetting one petal with water. I use the orange on its own, but I mix some water with it because I want the paint to bleed over the wet paper. Paint that along the edge and allow the paint to bleed. I don't want it to completely cover the yellow either. I kept painting them in like that one at a time and on this one here I'm using the permanent red. It's a really vibrant colour. On this petal I've got a bit of the orange paint. I'm painting on dry paper here. Then I started to add a bit of detail in between the petals with the permanent red. I painted on dry paper and I softened the edge with a damp brush. I kept going, painting each petal in individually. Here I'm working on wet paper with the orange and the red mixed together. I found that the colours blended together beautifully. There's no problem with that. This is a bit of the crimson, the permanent alizarin crimson. And I found that the colours were really super vibrant and I was able to layer fairly easily with them. So here I've got some of the warm yellow. This is permanent yellow. It's a beautiful, rich colour as well. Before that dried, I went along the edge with some of the orange and I allowed it to bleed back. Here I'm layering some of the orange over the top. I 
definitely noticed that the paint stayed wet for a fair amount of time. And I'd say that's because of the honey that's mixed into it. I tried to lift a bit of colour here as well. And that was fairly easy to take off. You can see the beautiful glow that that paint is giving me. Here I've got some of the permanent red. I paint that with the Riga brush along the edge and then I pull it over the petal. And again, all of the work that I did on this petal was done with the one wetting. So it definitely stays workable for a fair amount of time. And for my method of painting, that's quite beneficial. I went back then with my damp brush and took a few more highlights off. For the center of the flower, I mixed some brown, which was a mix of the Aquarius yellow, the permanent alizarin crimson, and the French ultramarine. I watered it down to begin with. I washed that color into the center of the flower. I don't like to mix more than three pigments together to make my colours. And these paints are mostly single pigments. So when you do mix them together, you get lovely clean mixes. I needed a darker mixture of those three colours. This is permanent alizarin crimson. Aquarius yellow I wanted fairly dark mixture so I sopped up some of that moisture from that earlier mixture and then I got a bit more French ultramarine and then I painted that around the edges and I had time to mix that while the paint was wet on the paper and it's still wet. It's usually a good idea to mix your colours up before you need them, but I didn't with this. I went all the way around the edge, leaving a lighter section in the middle. I put a bit more colour on the middle too. It was a little bit too light in that area. Still wet from the one wetting. And then I got the Riga brush and started to paint on a little bit of detail there while it was still wet. That's a beautiful velvety dark colour. I had to deepen the colour on these darker petals or the petals that were in the shadow and the paint layered on quite easily. So I was able to paint layer upon layer. This is the permanent yellow, the warm yellow. I'm painting that on the wet paper. I wet the paper first because it gives me a little bit longer to get the paint on there. I've got to layer a few different colours on here so I don't want it to dry too quickly. This is that beautiful orange colour. I dragged some of the colour down over the petal streaks and then I decided I wanted a smaller brush to do that. And here I've got the permanent alizarin uh, crimson with my rigger brush. The colours are just absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed working with them. I also had to do a bit of glazing where you paint one colour over the top of another colour after it had dried. Just deepening the colour on that petal there. Once all the petals were painted in, I returned to the background. I needed some darker areas on it. 
So I wet each little background section with water and I painted some of that dark mixture on there. Again, this was a mix of the permanent alizarin crimson, the Aquarius yellow and the French ultramarine. It's a bit blacker this time. It's a bit more browner last time. And when I was happy with it, I took the washi tape off from around the edges. You can see how beautiful and vibrant the colours are. And here is the finished painting. I have prints of this painting available on my website. The link is in the description of the video. I'd like to thank Franz and Maggie from Jackson's in Australia for sending me the paints to try. They told me that they will be getting some of these paints in tubes soon, so I look forward to trying some other colours. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like because it helps the channel and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week. In this video, I'm going to paint What has he got? What are you doing? He's on the prints. He's ripping plastic. Do you mind? So how should I do it? Should I hold it up or should I just look down at it? And then you can... And yes, I can... Yeah? Or should I just... Do you mind? Some cats. <laughs> ah, right.